How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? How you getting in? Everybody getting a fuzz? What's going on, people? What's going on, people? Um, I come to bring you some news and reference to um a restaurant. Now, in case you don't know about this. There's a California restaurant that launched a nation's first transgender job program. Now, this is from a woman by the name of Mikhail Menderson. Now, she is a transgender. She's also an advocate, a public speaker, and a businesswoman. Now, she owned a restaurant um, called El Palo La El El Polo Loco in Southern California. Now, in case you know it's a restaurant and stuff, and this is all the different menus that they have. Now, she's basically, in 2012, she hired the first transgender person that told her her heart was, you know, for a transgender to find a job because of job discrimination and stuff. And 8 to 10 percent of the workforce trans out of about of 150 trans employees. And this is a civil right, you know, issue. Now, basically, I'm going to give you an idea in reference to how they started this program. Check this out. We have a story about someone who saw a problem in her own community and set out to fix it. The problem was the high unemployment rate for transgender people. A trans woman in California took a success story from her own businesses and tried to supersize it. From member station KPCC in Los Angeles, Leo Duran reports. The lunch rush was supposed to end hours ago, but in the heart of L.A., this fast food restaurant, El Pollo Loco, is still buzzing. Some people hungry. <laughs> General Manager Chrissy Ramirez glides between the registers and the massive grill, surveying hundreds of pieces of chicken. We take the temperature to the chicken, we've taken the leg, we've taken the breast and all things. Ramirez has worked for El Pollo Loco for four years now, and she's loyal to the company because it gave her a chance that no one else would consider since she's transgender. Ramirez has the owner to thank for that, Michaela Mendelssohn. The word's just gotten out that I'm um, a trans owner supporting trans people. In 1988, before she transitioned, Mendelssohn bought her first El Pollo Loco franchise. She just happened to like their menu. I didn't go to college to figure out which restaurant. <laughs> she acquired several more stores by the time she transitioned in 2004. But it wasn't until 2012 that she hired her first trans employee. That person told her how hard it was to get a job. Workplace discrimination and stigma are some of the reasons that trans people have an unemployment rate that's double the general population's. And Mendelssohn was moved, and she started to reach out to other trans people looking for work. Currently, we have 8 to 10 percent of our total workforce is transgender out of about 150 employees. Then she had a thought. Is there a way to get other restaurants to follow her lead? So earlier this year, at a conference of the California Restaurant Association, she was chatting with other members at a hotel bar, including her longtime friend and the group's head, Jot Condi. So I've known Michaela for, I don't know, 10, 12 years? 12. A long time. And Condi heard about the workplace discrimination that trans people deal with. I consider myself as a person, somebody who had my head in the sand when it comes to what they're really going through. This is a civil rights issue. Condi says he was convinced to have the Restaurant Association back Mendelssohn's big idea. To me, it wasn't like a, whoa, are you serious? To me, it made sense. The idea was this. Mendelssohn would start a program connecting trans people looking for jobs with restaurants looking for workers. The association has 22,000 members, so that means the program would be so large scale that it could make a real difference. And the first big step happened recently. I'm on the convention floor of the Western Food Service and Hospitality Expo that's happening in downtown LA. Um, do you want to try a meatball? Uh, you just cut it in half. The California Restaurant Association sponsors this event every year. Vendors from around 
around the country are trying to entice the 10,000 attendees to try something new. Try a little sample? Uh, sure. What am I sampling here? Ding bong, pot stickers, green rolls. And one floor just above the expo, the association hosts a seminar where Mendelssohn gives restaurateurs their first taste of her new program. Take a seat. We are here today with uh, what we call the new normal trans. She gives them an intro course on the basics of trans people. You can call that Trans 101. She explains how to apply and be certified as trans friendly. And Mendelssohn also tells people that a state grant will pay for the first 60 hours of a new hire's wages as an incentive. Back on the expo floor, though, there's some skepticism. Some attendees say this program for trans people sounds like a good thing. I don't see why they can't work the way everybody else is entitled to work in this country. That's Grant Theme. But then he hesitates. You know, I still think there's a majority of people out there that may have a problem being served by somebody that's transgender. That concern worried Mendelssohn, too. But she was surprised. In the years she's had restaurants staffed with trans people, customers have been overwhelmingly supportive. And when they aren't, she says bosses should be prepared to stand up for their employees. You know, you hear the thing, the customer's always right. In my restaurants, the customer's always right unless they attack you personally. And with more trans people visible in the workplace, it could change the way all Americans view them, one order at a time. Okay, you see that? You know, and they were saying the reference to, you know, the guy was saying, you know, if we may have a problem for a trans person, you know, serving food and stuff, you know, and that's not a surprise and stuff. So, I'm going to give you an idea of meeting her yourself. Check this out. My name is Michaela Avery Mendelson. I am uh, the president of Poya West Corp and a transgender activist. Hello, my name is Chris Ramirez. I'm a general manager for two years on this store. My name is Mary Angel Hernandez. I am a cashier and drive through attendant. Uh, my name is Jessie Zambrano and I'm working for Poya Loco right now. Nearly half of the employees that work in the store identify as transgender as I do as well. was our first transgender worker hired. Christy talked to me about the severe difficulties she had had in her previous job. I lost my job because I used their um, woman bathroom. And when I used their men's bathroom, because my manager told me, you need to use that one. And I don't feel good and I don't feel comfortable, you know, because some men come in and try to touch me and whatever, you know, and I go to tell them, they guys uh, fire me with no excuses to say, oh, I, we need to cover my customers, so what about me? That really tugged at my heart. I knew at that point that it was more important to me to start hiring more transgender employees. <laughs> I work in a Pollo Loco. I feel so free. I love be working with a transgender girl like me. I've never were in a situation where I had other transgender peers to see how well we got along with each other. It ended up just being so so fluid. All I can promise to anybody I hire is that they will get an equal footing and the opportunity that anybody else has. So many of the transgender people we've hired have absolutely shined in the workplace. I don't need to be like another person. I feel free. She's giving a lot of opportunities to a lot of people and I think other people enjoy it. Our customers love it. They feel that energy, that enthusiasm that comes from our transgender employees, that they're so happy to be out in the workplaces who they are and that comes back to us in compliments from our customers. The disability that we're creating here is important because it creates a conversation with people who have less information about us and our community. It helps bring people together. It helps shine light into uh, the reality of, of, of the transgender community, who we are and what we can do well. And to also inspire other girls, they too can make a difference. They too can go and look for a job that will make them feel safe and free and most importantly comfortable being themselves. Anything um, that we want to be, we can do it. We are a regular normal person. It's we need the opportunity to be successful in our life.
As a trans person, I was quite surprised to have a hard time in Los Angeles. I was hard because of the discrimination, the bullying. Transgender people are twice as likely to be unemployed and four times as likely if they're trans women of color. It's basically a, a bias. The lack of opportunity being offered towards me, that was the message that I was getting, is that we don't want to hire you. I formed um, a group called California Trans Workplace Project. Right now we're working with the California Restaurant Association and we're working closely with the center. This is the kind of thing that not only is helping the trans people that are going to get jobs through this, it opens hearts and minds. I believe that every time someone meets you, they're educated in some ways because you have helped them erase a stigma that they have carried on maybe the whole life. So many people don't realize they've ever met a trans person. But when they realize it, it's the one-on-one -on -one contact that in the end makes the biggest difference. Places like the LGBT Center are important, certainly because it's the hub of our community. It's like the heart of what's happening. I love working closely with them and you know, I'm always sending people there for help, whether it's to see therapists, to get medical help with their hormones, or even legal help. The center helping me to get a doctor. Nobody look at me because, you know, we are the family. It's such a wonderful thing to have in our community because we know that together we're stronger. And the center offers that platform to embrace and bring all these people together, making our community a much safer and better place for all. It's invaluable what they do, and I'm proud to be working with them. I think that, you know, all I can say is thank you, Michaela. You know, and the thing about it is that, you know, it is someone who saw a problem amongst a lot of other ones that we have and she's trying to do her best as far as fixing. You know, and she's showing the light as a positive thing that she said we're gonna stand behind the transgender person as far as discrimination, you know, if the customer has a problem. You know, it's sad, but in the world we live in, you know, there always gonna be an issue within anybody, whether you're trans or not, you know. So I support this and represent her story as far as her trying to show the transgender people that we are out here, we're in the struggle as well as showing people that you know, these are human rights, these are actually human beings, you know, and it's sad that we have to say that, you know, when they were saying that the transgender person, he was serving you food and stuff, and, you know, the sad part about it is I went through this as far as, um, even in the gay community, there was a problem with me working inside of a bar, serving and drinks and stuff, so I definitely know about discrimination, and let's be honest here, discrimination does not just exist within the straight community, it also, dis it, discrimination also exists among the LGBT, you know, but I'm going to acknowledge, say thank you so much for, you know, showing this positive message and letting the girls know that there are people out here that are fighting for us as the trans rights. Anybody being said, I just want to share that with you, and I'm going to let you know I love you, and I'm going to thank you for watching. Catch the rate.